Doc here with Last Best Tool, and today let's talk LED flashlights. But first, I'm in the middle of a Jenga game here with LEDs. These are all mostly tactical flashlights, and I was just thinking I might be able to get one out of here. Let's try maybe this one. Oh no! Ugh! Stop! Oh, that's gutsy, gutsy, gutsy. Uh, let's see, maybe this one down. Oh. oh, well. I guess that's why we don't play Jenga with, uh, with flashlights. Um, anyway, I wanted to go over some of the aspects of these LED flashlights, namely batteries, the LEDs, the uh, form of them, the feature set, and then the programmed interface part. Um, so LED flashlights are, you can think of the lighting more almost as a chemical situation rather than a mechanical one. The mechanical ones are like the wiggling um, filaments that, um, you know, Edison worked with where you put electricity through and it would wiggle back and forth and get really hot and then bright and then you'd end up with some light coming out of it. But these are more chemical and they can be unbelievably bright. Um, so bright that it's possible to buy flashlights that are so bright for the perp that they're inappropriate for the purpose you want to use them. So let's talk about that. Okay, the main feature that a lot of people look at right off the bat is lumens. They, you know, you turn it on and it's like, how bright is this? And we use a couple of different numbers um, to describe brightness, but lumens seems to be the one that catches on. And a way to think about it is um, maybe a five lum a one lumen light, yeah, you could tell it's on in a really, really dark environment. A five lumen light would allow you to maybe comfortably uh, read something in an extremely dark environment and fairly close up. 20 lumens would allow you, let's see this I've got this is this is 20 lumens here. It's a little hard to see. Um, how bright that is, but uh, you can detect it even with the ambient light, but it's not super bright. It's not going to blind you. Um, and then it goes up from there. Let's say 100 lumens would allow you to walk at a comfortable pace through a dark forest. Um, 500 lumens would allow you to see around a dark forest um, quite a ways and probably allow you to run without much trouble over roots and trees and under stuff. A thousand lumens, now you're dealing kind of with a spotlight. This one, this is a thousand lumens here. I mean, it's just, it can be blindingly bright. Um, and then when you go up from there, you're starting to kind of get into car headlight lumen territory. For uh, reference, if you had one of those old gas-powered Coleman lanterns, that might have been around 700 lumens, but that was a distributed light. And that's one of the things is you may have like um, this light here and my Klein light that I just got are about the same number of lumens. This one is an area light. It's dumping those photons out over a much larger area, whereas this one has a bit of a spot to it. Whoops, and a strobe. A bit of a spot, and that actually allows me to shoot the beam a lot further. So I could not use this um, say, to look for a raccoon on a roof very easily, but I could this one. But this one would be a little too blinding to try to read a circuit box, um, especially uh, close up. It's just too much, even though the same quantity, if you think of lumens like water, the same amount of water is pouring out of these, but one is over a large area and one's coming out of a garden hose or a fire hose, if you will. So, what do you want? Well, one of the problems with high lumen flashlights, there, there's several, but one of the main ones is it's often too much for what you're trying to do. Unless you're trying to spot out 100 yards, um, you know, like say this one, this is a thousand lumen tactical light. It's designed to, you know, screw onto a Picatinny rail, whatever your use is, to see a, quite a distance. It's not a pistol light, it would be a rifle light. Whereas something, you know, maybe more like this, little wider beam distribution, not as many lumens. Um, you know, something like this would be a uh, more of a close-up light. Now, when you get to a thousand lumens, you really have to work 
uh, with, with it as a, at a distance because otherwise this is just so blindingly bright that even if you're 10 feet away, if you hit it on a flat wall, a highly reflective wall, it's just too much. So if you buy a high lumen light, you're probably gonna wanna be able to use it on a lower speed. I call them speed. Um, and basically to a um, 100 lumens, 50 lumens, 20 lumens, five lumens, etc. cetera. So uh, you wanna be able to have a choice. This one, there is no choice. It's it's uh, off or it's on. That's the only choice with this thing. This is a tactical light. Tactical usually just means that when you turn it on initially, it's gonna be giving its all. It's full blast. This one is almost the same. This is a Fury Tactical by Surefire. Um, and this is a, P um, a P3X Fury. They're about the same size, rather they are the same size, all the way around. This one has a push button tail cap all on, all on, or I can twist this, that's an interface thing. And when I twist it, it's on, twist it, it's off, that's it. There's no click on the, on the tail cap, but that's for a very specific use. Whereas this one, almost the same, I push the tail cap, it clicks, and I've got a 20 lumen light, not super bright. That is enough for an awful lot of tasks. If I need more, I can hit it again. Now there's my thousand lumens. I can even feel that getting hot on my hand. So this is not a tactical light. Um, this I would call a more of a personal light or you know the classic flashlight, that's what it's for. 20 lumens on the first push, easily to read a map in the car, look around, try to find something under a seat, walk through a, you know, a, a stairwell, insert a key in a door, all that kind of stuff. But if I need to blast it out to a thousand lumens, there it is. And that'll blind somebody, that'll cause people disorientation, or I can shoot it, you know, a hundred yards up the street to see if I can see something. So those, that's one of the, one of the issues with lumens. Another has to do with the battery aspect. If you load up one of these with brand new batteries and punch it on to a thousand lumens, that might last a minute or two at a full on thousand lumens. Then it immediately start, starts throttling down in brightness because the batteries simply don't have the juice to punch out a thousand lumens for very long. So if you've got brand new batteries, you may be getting the full thousand lumens for the initial couple of minutes. Now you'll see like a thousand, you know, maximum speed, a thousand lumens for maybe an hour versus, you know, 20 hours on the low speed. Well, what you're getting is a thousand lumens for a minute or two, and then it's gonna start dropping fast to maybe 400 lumens until the batteries are exhausted. And that might take an hour. So you might be paying for a thousand lumens, you're not gonna get it for very long. So, so if that's the key, you know, to your entire need for the flashlight, you might have to go with something even more powerful if you want to sustain a really high lumen amount. So uh, most flashlights um, give you a couple of different choices. This is a, um, a Phoenix here, and I can toggle through about four different brightnesses. That's pretty good. The real low one might be the one I leave it on. Um, this has a memory. A memory just means that it remembers the last um, level of usage. And then I can toggle it up if I need something more. But a lot of stuff I might handle here. This is going to give you their best battery life, stuff like that. So the lumen a number is not, um, not just the only thing. Um, and in this case, these are very similar in overall lumens. Very similar design. This is a little bit melted here. This is a crenulated bezel. Um, what am I looking at different? Well, let's take these two. These are both Surefires. This is the um, E1D Defender, and this is the Backup. Two classic Surefire lights. Um, one thing you'll notice, this is a melted feature light, very smooth, designed to fit in a pocket, doesn't catch on anything. You know, like it says, it's a backup. Whereas this is more of a tactical um, light designed for um, maybe engaging 
you know, a bad guy or something. What it's got is a very sharp bez or um, a crenulated bezel here. These um, formed aluminum teeth, you know, they can bite into skin. And in fact, um, this is its larger partner, a two, two cell flashlight, one cell flashlight. Um, these are also designed that they will uh, um, gather a little bit of DNA. Some of them have even sculpted some flashlights like this kind of recessed areas that have DNA catchers. So if you whacked somebody, you'd be able to use it as evidence. What else do you have? Both of these are full on when you turn them on, but then also you can power them down to a small amount. So it has full on and then a lower, lower level. And that's a tactical light. So full on and then a lower level. Um, real handy, this takes a small battery. In fact, the battery is only this big, so you can see a lot of its light, but that's durability. That's a striking weapon. You'll notice that the tail caps are different. The tail cap here is covering, a, is, is shrouding a switch, so it doesn't turn on when it hits. This one doesn't turn on either. This one does turn on. Um, so whether or not you can activate it on a corner um, or on a, a surface is something to think about. A lot of times the shrouded ones are protected in packs and pockets as well. Um, but how easily could you hit, it, hit a corner and turn it on? You can see that this one has a reduced shroud. It's a little bit lower. So this actually is possible to turn on by pushing it against something. Whereas others like this one are designed to be able to be turned on strictly from a, um, a push. So um, that's, that's the tail cap issue. A lot of tail cap switches, they're just a rubber coated clicking mechanism. Some of these batteries do off gas, especially when you're using really high voltage. This is three, so three, three volts here. Three, so this is a nine volt flashlight. So there's a lot of energy here and sometimes when these off gas or produce gas inside a water, a heavily waterproof flashlight, it actually bulges out the tail cap like a balloon and becomes hard to push. So what you, what you have to do is just open it up and just release that pressure. You might encounter that, you know, once in your life, but that's what's going on. And then you can operate it normally. As far as the, uh, the, the bezels, you want a really solid, preferably glass covering because these can take a lot of impact. Um, you drop them, hit them, point them at things. They, they can actually, uh, if they're cheap, they can start to scratch, chip, etc. cetera. Um, and you want a really nice reflector inside because that's how you capture most of the photons coming out of those, um, those LEDs in the center. Um, <clears throat> a lot of lights, uh, use batteries, but uh, many new ones now are, are coming rechargeable. So you, they actually have a large cell inside and you can tank them up before you go, which is great because these are kind of pricey. And if you want to put, a, in, put new ones into your flashlight every time you head out to get that maximum number of lumens or to make sure that you got a full, you know, full tank when you leave, it gets expensive. So the rechargeables are wonderful because I can fill this thing up and then I'm set to go. And I could do that every single day. It does take a large battery. This is an 18650, which is a, um, the equivalent of about two of the standard one, two, three cells. Um, and it's actually a, a great size. It's an industry standard. Um, it's truly a, uh, it's 18650, um, truly a good power cell. Um, it lasts a long time, and then you can uh, use these with reckless abandon because you just come home, charge them back up, you're good to go. Well, what if you're on the road for a while? Then you might want a set of batteries. But a lot of these can take either battery, regular one, two, three cells, or rechargeables. And then many people can charge them back up, like I can use my Klein light here to charge up my spotlight or my flashlight. So that's kind of nice. Um, another thing is this is a cheap light, very cheap. This is like 20 bucks or something. It actually has um, 
multiple colors, so complexity is, is increased here. But listen, I can hear and feel the battery bouncing around inside it. So this is a 200 and some dollar light, and this is a $20 light. What do I get? What's different? They're both aluminum. They both have some texture to them. They both have a clip. They both have a crenulated bezel, sort of. Um, tail cap switch, set aluminums. This one's a little bit brighter. What's the difference? Well, okay, first of all, the Surefire, it's an American company. American hands put this together. It's over-designed, usually over-engineered for, for uh, strength because it's a weapon light. It's a striking light. It's a light that is designed to have all kinds of, of um, you know, rough encounters. This one is more like a hardware store checkout, cool, fun, play with the kids light. I wouldn't count on it working in any kind of extreme condition. I don't even count on it being very waterproof. Um, and let's talk LEDs. They might both have LEDs. They're inside there. I can see them. Well, when LEDs are made, I mean, it's almost like cookies coming off of a, you know, a, a bakery assembly line. They're going to be good ones and bad ones. The LEDs are produced in, in, in mind-boggling volume um, because essentially it's chemistry. They're, they're producing these on, um, or through a process, and then they test them afterwards. You know, they're not individually made. They're made by the thousands. Um, and then some of them are really good. Some of them are mediocre, and some of them are pretty bad. This company that buys this, you know, the hardware store checkout one, this buys the cheap LEDs. The ones that work but aren't that great, they're all over the place in color, maybe they're not as, as durable. Surefire only gets the very best LEDs, so the light coming out of them is going to be different. The durability is going to be different. And then they have to put the LED on a circuit board, and the circuit boards might be cheaply made here and then designed for combat here. So I could take this, throw it as hard as I can across the room, it's going to work. This one's going to break if I set it down here too hard because the circuit board's cheap, the welding or the, the soldering of the connections is cheap, the battery connection is cheap, it's bouncing around in here. Um, it might work, but you don't want to, you know, count on it for your life. So it'd be better to get a nicer flashlight um, that's got a reputation for durability. But I have had one of these go down. Surefire covered it right away, but it kind of bummed me when I clicked it and nothing happened and I knew there were new batteries and then click it, click, click, and then it comes on. The switch went bad. Um, another thing, there are a lot of key fob lights. These are getting pretty amazing. Super small, super durable lights, high lumens. You're getting, you know, 100, 200 lumens out of something like this. This one... Um, you can actually recharge it. So again, I can go out. Um, here's, here's the battery. I mean, this is, this is really nice. Stainless steel. Um, and stuff like this is really kind of changing the industry. I mean, that is, that's a really bright light. Doesn't last very long, but lasts plenty long for a keychain light. The cheap keychain lights um, tend to not last very long, not have good clean light. Um, I've even heard of people who have accidentally turned them on in their pocket um, only to um, burn out the battery and, and feel that they're getting a, you know, a bit of a toast <laughs> in their thigh. Um, I would recommend looking at um, Factor, at Phoenix, um, Olight makes great small key fob lights. And these things can really get you out of some jam. So you don't need the super expensive ones when you got a good solid one of these. Um, there are lights that look like lights. This is actually um, an infrared light. I use this with night vision. So I turn it on. It's Right now it's blasting my hand with a spotlight of infrared. I don't know what it's going to do to the camera. Maybe I've got it shut off. Um, but this actually, if it's on, this is actually a... Uh, um, uh, a tactical light designed for um, shooting out infrared light we can't see. It's a little too long a wavelength that's uh, good for working on with night vision stuff. 
Um, Milwaukee's pushing the flashlight end. They're using large kind of proprietary batteries, rechargeable. Um, this one here is like 70 bucks or something. So, you know, it might compare a little bit closer maybe to this factor here um, or this Phoenix. Good, good solid lights. I can detect some quality differences. They're Chinese made versus um, some of the other areas that, you know, other Asian countries that are making some of these good lights, the Phoenix lights and the, um, the stream lights. Uh, definitely worth looking at. Um, I can tell the light's a little bit different. Um, it's not, this could be a lot smaller than it is, but small means precision and precision is money. Um, but I do like them for, for a lot of uses. They're great for cars, they're great for shop. Um, but if I was doing some big adventure, I'd probably lean on my, on my Surefires um, over, uh, over the Milwaukee's. Um, and then there's um, different form factors that are starting to uh, pop up um, that allow us to uh, play with the shapes of the lights, the different uses. We're getting, you know, lasers attached on lights. Um, the ability to have a, uh, a really strong light on a pistol is, I mean, it's just critical. And then there are some attachments like this that allow you to, uh, you know, throw a light, almost any light, onto um, another object. This could be a bike handlebar. This could be a, a shoulder strap on a backpack, something like that. This is a little O-Lite attachment. Um, real simple, like 10 bucks on Amazon, but allows you to uh, create your own headlamps. Um, lots of different, different ways to take a high quality LED flashlight and kind of repurpose it. And then this is an area that it, it's, it's Apple basically with their Apple Watch did get us to uh, allow wrist space into the tech market. This was an attempt by Surefire. This is an amazing light. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a wrist light, straps on, and it was designed um, to be worn on the left hand um, like this uh, if you were holding, say, a handgun, and this was your handgun light, um, as well as being able to uh, um, just use it as a flashlight. Interesting. I like it for some things. It can be really handy. I'm glad they're playing with, uh, I don't know, innovative designs, but um, it's just fun to watch where we're headed with kind of the, the in quotes, flashlight, um, where else we can go with it, especially since we've got huge power in both batteries and in LEDs. I mean, it's a whole different world. And the ones I'll, last, I'll land on because um, I'll do batteries and battery chargers and things like that in another video. Um, I find th this is this um, kind of a Streamlight, it's a Stylus Pro. Uh, I, I don't know if I've ever met a mechanic that doesn't have one of these or have experience with one of these. Takes two AA batteries, or AAA batteries, the little tiny guys, these. Um, I, whoops, um, they actually, grab that, um, are, are great if you want to use rechargeables. I often will use a, like a rechargeable lithium ion um, rechargeable battery. This is a double A though. Um, but these come in really handy. They are so nice, so small. Um, yet the power that comes out of these is, is really worthwhile. Um, this is a four sevens. It's a titanium one. This is the standard inexpensive streamlight. This has been upgraded a bunch of times. Um, but then it comes down to the manual of arms. Can you figure out how to operate the flashlight without um, a manual? And some lights are wildly complex. I mean, you, you like I've got lights where you have to twist the bezel three times and then you push the button and then you can lock it in or choose limits or do you want strobe or not? Um, if you hand it to somebody and they can't figure out how to use it, they're certainly not gonna figure out how to use it in the dark. So I like simple, either a tactical light, full on, and then a lower level with a second click. Makes me happy. That's exactly what this is, um, or, or what this is, and this is, and this is. Um, that's what a lot of these do. Um, or I want one 
that's low end. This would be this would be the camping light. Turn that back on. Low end and then high end. This is the one I want camping. This would be the one I would want um, for something a more tactical use. Now, when it comes to the small ones, a lot of these, the stream light is one speed. That's it. This four sevens, I've got it set to go low, medium, high. Low, medium, high. So if I turn it on in a dark environment, I'm not blinding myself. Whereas any tactical light, which sounds cool, but you turn it on and bam, you're blinded, you're seeing spots, or you have to cover it. You have to remember to put your hand over it till you click it and then kind of peek in there. I don't like that. Um, so the, the way this tail cap operates or any button, um, like on the, the, the Phoenixes, can you figure these out? Because a lot of people, they're like, how does this work? And then they, they're pointing it at their face, you know, and then they turn it on and they're blinded. And it's like, you know, that's not what I wanted. You know, how does this, like this guy, you know, how does this work? How does this work? And then wham, oh. Um, so I think simplicity is critical. You don't want to have something that's complex. You can't figure it out, can't remember it. I like them to start out low, work their way up. I don't mind two settings. I can live with three, but that middle one almost never gets used. And I think it's important that um, you get a flashlight that takes a type of battery or charger or something so you'll actually use it. Because I know so many people who have a really nice flashlight and then they've got a dud that they use instead because they don't want to damage that or they don't want to, you know, use up the batteries. They don't want to share it with anyone. They don't want to just leave it on when they're working on their car. They're too worried about it. Um, so that's my uh, take on LEDs. I will do more with batteries, battery chargers, battery cases um, to help feed these things. But overall, um, I am um, enamored with flashlights and thoroughly kind of thrilled with the power of bat the new batteries we're getting. Um, and the power out of LEDs. You know, the whole world of lighting is changing almost every year. Anyway, with that, Doc out.